migrating from ASP.NET Core RC2 to ASP.NET Core 1.0 is simple compared to migrating from RC1 to RC2. From RC1 to RC2, the DNX command line was deprecated and we had to change the whole command line interface to the new .NET Core CLI. But in this case, migrating from RC2 to the final version of ASP.NET Core 1.0 is not that hard. I went ahead and created a new project called Course Project Final, which is on the left side of my screen. And inside of this, I've put all of the class files associated with our project so far. I will make this available to download after this section. Now you'll have the final ASP.NET Core 1.0 application. From here, we will start building our app with different dependencies associated with the new upgrade. Let's look at some of the differences between the upgrade and RC2. On the left side of my screen, I have the new .NET Core 1.0. And on the right side of my screen, I have an RC2 app that we migrated. So right here, I have the global.json file open in both solutions. And you've noticed the difference between the two is one simple tag associated in our JSON file. It's the version. The version we have in the new application is 1.0.0-preview2. And in RC2, it's preview1. So I would recommend that you uninstall the SDK associated with RC2 install the preview 2 version for the tooling and this is one difference you'll have to make that you associate in your global.json the big difference between the two is associated in the project.json as you can see right here all of the dependencies associated inside of our project you can see at the top we have a .NET core.app it's 1.0 in rc2 you have the qualifier of rc2 and a number after it and as you've noticed in every dependency that's used in our project.json, the only difference between the two is the RC2 extension after each dependency. And in the new version of ASP.NET Core, we just put 1.0. You'll see a few differences associated with the Razor tooling. In RC2, you're doing preview one final. In the new .NET Core, it's preview two final. So pretty much you can just take off the RC2 associated with the dependencies that you are injecting and you can see the differences between IIS integration tools associated with Preview 1 and Preview 2. Another item that's being removed from the new .NET Core upgrade is the imports extension associated with IIS integration tools and different imports associated with the Razor tooling. We do not have this tag associated with imports and the portable .NET 4.5, Windows 8, and DNX Core, the imports file is going away. So now we'll have something simple as ASP.NET Core.Server IIS integration and the versioning associated with that dependency. So this is some major changes we have associated inside of our project.json. Just change the extension type to associate with each dependency so it's not pointing to RC2. A new item that you're going to want to look at that what we're going to have in here is the .NET bundle and we'll examine that in a second. It's a new dependency that we can associate bundling and minification associated inside of our project and we can pull that dependency right here as you can see in the tooling of bundle minifier.core and the version associated with that. Now in this application we utilize gulp to do our minification and our different tasks. It's the new .NET bundle dependency that we can associate inside of our project. This is what we'll look at later if you want to use the bundler and minifier. But in this case, we're going to use gulp throughout most of this project. So all the dependencies are a little different. You see the runtime options, some of the taggings a little bit different. The build options are simple. They're pretty much the same. So now if we go to our startup.cs, you don't see much differences in the startup.cs. It still has the emit entry point for both applications. You can see the iConfiguration route. You can see all of the different associations that we have inside of our project, routing, telemetry. There isn't many differences between RC2 and the final version of .NET Core and your startup.cs. If you look at your program.cs, there isn't many differences as well. As you can see, the use startup, the build, host.run. Now you won't be able to utilize from the iWebhost builder the use server type. You must use Kestrel or use WebListener to associate inside of your project. These are the major differences between RC2 and the final version of .NET Core 1.0. You do not see drastic changes as you did from RC1 to RC2. 
from RC2 to the final version of .NET Core 1.0. It's very simple. So I've migrated everything, put it in our new project, and you can download this new project attached to this lecture. These are the changes associated with the upgrade to .NET Core 1.0. There's no more RC versions. Now we can focus on finishing up our project and moving forward with Entity Framework Core and Web API, Angular 2, and TypeScript. So now we're going to finish out our lecture associated with views. We're going to look at partial views. We're going to look at view components and then wrap it up to move into Entity Framework Core.